We've been talking about business operational strategies of your brokerage post startup. Now, one of the things the state wanted to cover was also some physical site configurations. So this seems like we've jammed this car into reverse because this is a whole complete different topic. And we've touched on this a little bit in other courses, but <clears throat> needed to touch on a little bit here. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the legal issues that are related to your physical location of where you're actually operating your business. And there's a couple of things that we need to talk about. One of them is the ADA compliance, the Americans with Disability Act. Now, <clears throat> Title I of the Americans with Disability Acts of 1990 prohibit private employers, state and local governments, employment agencies, unions, from discriminating against qualified individuals with disability in their job applications for hiring, firing, advancement, and all of those other terms that deal with companies. Now, you are a private agency, so therefore, this applies to you, all right? The act requires that employers make reasonable, not absolute, accommodations for employees. All right, so you do not need to provide accommodations that would impose what they call an undue financial or physical burden on the employee. This is known as the, un the undue burden rule. So what I'm saying here is you have a financial out, and that's not a word, that's not the right concept. I don't wanna say out, don't look at me like that. <clears throat> I don't want you to use this as a legal reason or as a fallback shield to go, well, I can't afford. If you truly can't afford to lower the uh, workstations or add uh, grab bars to the bathroom, there are some physical and financial exemptions. For instance, the building that houses the school, when we first moved in in 2008, did not have an elevator. The building owner had an exemption. So therefore the only way down to the first floor was a stairwell. That is poses problems. If I had an employee that had a physical handicap that involved a wheelchair, they could not get down the stairs. However, in his particular case, the building was old enough that he had an exemption from Title I from the ADA. It has since been rectified in about 2016. They've added uh, a, a new elevator, dug a pit, did all of the stuff. So now our school is actually accessible. Now that at whenever it was create this building was created, obviously had an exemption because of the cost, which was known as an undue burden. You also have physical, so if you just have physical limitations, like 100 people inside of 20 square feet, that's a very stupid example, but you kind of get the idea, all right? The ADA defines a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities, um, a record of an impairment, or being recorded or regarded as having an impairment. Um, it does not apply if that impairment is transitory in nature. So less than six months. Like if you've got a walking boot because you had a foot surgery, that would not qualify you as physically impaired because it is a transitory in nature. All right. Now, the key issue here is Title III. Title III prohibits the discrimination on the basis of disability for access to public goods and services like your brokerage, all right? Now, it's important that you understand Title III will cover your personal residence if you've turned that into your brokerage, okay? The undue rule still applies to Title III, just like Title I. But the key is what I just mentioned a, a moment ago. Title III 
will cover your residence if you've made or declared your house as your real estate brokerage office. Okay. Now it only covers the portion that you're using as an office. So if you've turned your garage into an office, then it covers that portion. <clears throat> so the federal guidelines urge businesses, and I typically like to read this to make sure we get this warning, to adhere to all accessibility standards in the digital form. Your website, they must provide assistance and optimize the web content to their website accordingly to prevent lawsuits and provide a better civil rights service. So your website also has to be accessible with maybe the visually impaired. Somebody maybe can't read eight point font. So there has to be a way to change the font size to accommodate this Title III aspect. Very important. Office buildings versus a house. The ADA does not cover strictly uh, residential property. It also covers any place of accommodation, such as a real estate brokerage located in a private residence. The portion of the residence that's used for the purpose are subject to ADA requirements. That is a straight quote from the ADA National Network. So what I was just saying, let me reiterate it, it does not bring in the whole entire house it merely would bring in that section of the house that you're using for business so if you think you're a sole proprietor and you list your house and you're operating out of your upstairs bedroom and you have declared that as being your office you could have some issues because the ada says there has to be reasonable accommodations for clients to visit that office you also have other issues when dealing with your physical location. You've got zoning issues, fire marshal issues, environmental issues. You've got HOA covenants, you've got CCR covenants. So if you're going to declare a house as your, res as your primary place of business for the uh, board of realtors that you're at, understand that that's not just a flippant decision that you're making you better take all of this into consideration, which would have been in your planning and your operational strategy. So it might benefit you more to go, oh, I think I might want to go rent a shared office space like at WeWork or Upwork, or Upwork's not one, but WeWork is. Um, any of those places where you might be able to rent a commercial space one room office so that you can declare that as your office and therefore adhere to all of the, those issues. So those are just two physical site uh, requirements that you better keep in your plan during your operational process. And we did not even touch on the fact that if you're going to scale or be in the growth phase, you may not be able to manage that out of a bedroom in your house. You may be smarter to get an office space so that if agents want to come and talk to you, they're not coming into your residence all the time. All right. So that's just one other spot um, is that physical location site that you need to keep into consideration in your business plan scenario.